going to learn how to size a motor. I'm going to introduce you guys to what we call the Wolf Chart. My name is Craig Mashad and I am the electrical instructor. So what is a Wolf Chart? How do we size it? Well, there's a few things that we need to know when sizing a motor. We need to know what size conductors we need to pull. We need to know what size overloads to install in our motor starter. And we need to know what kind of breaker we need to put in. So, how do we figure all this out? Simple. There is, we're going we're gonna to follow the nameplate, but we also have to follow the NEC codebook. Okay? So what, one thing that needs to, you need to remember is, having your codebook out while watching these videos are only going to benefit you. So, if you have your code book out, you should know, if you've already been in school, you should already know that Article 430, we cover motors. What we discuss today is going to be on Article 430. Now, are we going to be going to different articles? Yes, because unfortunately, that's how the code book is used. We have to, find, we have to figure out one problem and then go to an, uh, another part of the code to figure out the issue. So, how are we going to do that? Well. What is a wolf chart? Very simple. A wolf chart is set up like this. Wire, overload, fuse. Okay, so the wolf chart. W-O-L-F. Wire, overload, fuse. So the W stands for a wire. Overload stands for overloads. And fuse stands for fuse and breaker. Excuse me, F stands for fuse or breaker. So, how are we going to find this? Well, we're going to have to bounce back and forth. I am using the 2014 NEC codebook. It basically states that we have to find our information through Article 310B16, or excuse me, we have to find our information from Article 31015B16 to size our conductors. We really need to know what type of conductor we're using. But, for the most part, as long as you remember the under 100 amps, we can use the 60, de uh, 60 degree column. If it's over 100 amps, we can use the 75 degree column, just like we would size a service and so forth. So, what do we use? We're going to size conductors. So, I'm going to give you some information. We're going to take what's called the FLC and we're going to multiply it by 125%. The FLC stands for Full Load Current. Uh, I actually worked with somebody who actually kind of made it a little bit of sense and kind of broke it down a little bit easier where he called it the Full Load Code. Makes sense. If I'm finding the FLC, where would I find it? I would find the FLC in the code book. So, the Full Load Current is found in the code book. Another way you can remember it is call it full load code. Go to the code book, find it. Where do you go in the code book to find the FLC? You open up the code book to 430, 247 through 250, and you will find all your information. The overloads, we're going to go into article 430.32, uh, and that's going to discuss our overloads. Now, there's a couple different charts that we're going to use. We're going to have to go through and read the code book. Depending on what we're, what we're using, we may have to jump from one chart to another. Back to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to use the name plate reading. Where do you find the name plate reading? Very simple. It's right on the motor. And information that is coming uh, with the motor because there is some information that comes with the motor, but we can pretty much get all the information off the nameplate of the motor. Okay, We are going to be then looking for the FLA, which is full load amps, or we can also remember it as full load actual. What does actual mean? Well, actual means the actual amperage of the motor. And how that's determined is the amperage that it should be running at or drawing during a running stage. Not start up, not shut down, but a running stage. Okay? Continuous motors, remember, continuous motors run for more than three hours. 
So we have to remember that if we're dealing with a continuous motor that's going to, we're going to start it in the morning and it's going to run until lunchtime. And then after lunch, it's going to start back up again. It's going to run to the end of the day. We know that that's a continuous motor because it's running for more than three hours at a clip. So if it's a non-continuous motor, that means we may be running it once every couple hours. Okay. So there's a big difference between a continuous motor and a non-continuous motor. The next, now we have to size the fuse. Where would we find this? We're going to have to go to article 430.52, and that is going to tell us all our information. It's basically a little table that's going to tell us what type of fuse or breaker are we going to be using, what type of motor are we going to be protecting, and it's going to tell us where it goes. As we go through the examples, I will show you in the code book exactly where it is. So you can then highlight your code book so that when it comes time for you to actually uh, size a motor, you know exactly where to go. How do we size it? Well, it's very simple. Once we find article 430.52, we know that we're going to use the full load current to size the motor times whatever percentage our breaker or fuse is requiring. So this here, we will do FLC times whatever percent 430.52 is asking us to use for this. We have a 10 horsepower, 483 phase squirrel cage motor. We have a nameplate rating or a full load amp of 10 amps. So it means this 10 horsepower motor is drawing 10 amps. We have a service factor of 1.15. And this is going to be a dual element time delay fuse. So this is the stuff that we, this is all the information we need to know to size our wire, our overload, and our fuse. Let's break it down. We'll do wire first, then we'll do overload, then we'll do fuse. First thing we need to do is we need to find the FLC. So what does that mean? We need to go into 430, 250, okay? And we're going to go there and we're going to figure out what our FLC is for a 10 horsepower, 480 three-phase motor. Okay. So we're at a 10 horsepower, we have 480 here, we come down and it gives us 10 horsepower motor. We use the 460 chart and I'll explain that in a minute. We go down and we find 10 horsepower top line. It is 14 amps. Size the wire. Here's the, here's the formula. FLC times 125 or 125%. We take 14. We multiply it by 1.25 and we get 17.5 amps. So we take the full low current, we multiply it by 125%, it gives us 17.5 amps. So now we have to size the wire. We don't know exactly what we're using for wire, we're going to use the under 100 amp rule and we're going to use 60 degree terminals and we're going to say to ourselves okay we have 17.5 amps that has to be a number 12. 17.5 amps we are going to use a 12 gauge wire. We're going to size the overload. Sizing the overload we then have to refer to Article 430.32, or dot 32, 
that's going to give us our percentage on what we need to size this overload for. Okay. Remember, we have a service factor of 1.15. Okay. So looking at the code right now, we're looking for, we know our motor is a 1.15 or greater. So we're going to follow here. Motors that are marked with a service factor of 1.5 or greater, you will use 125%. Motors with a temperature rating of 40 degrees Celsius or less, you'll also multiply it by 125%. And all other motors, whether we know the information or not, will multiply it by 115%. We determined that we're going to use 125% because we have a service factor of 1.15. And according to Article 430.32, this is what we're going to use. So what do we need? We need to use the nameplate rating, which is the full load amps, or the FLA. The FLA is 10. So we're going to do FLA, uh, multiply it by 125%. So we're going to take 10 amps times 1.25, and that will give us a... 12.5 amp overload. Now, let's look in the code book at article 430.52. Okay, so here's our table 430.52. We're going to go down and you see we have a time delay fuse. We have a dual element time delay fuse. We have an instantaneous breaker and we have an inverse time breaker. On the side here, we have types of motors, so it's single phase motor, AC poly motor, squirrel cage motor, this is the one we're gonna be using. Design B, synchronized, wound rotor, and DC. So let's go back up to squirrel cage because we have a squirrel cage motor. And we are gonna be using a dual element time delay fuse. So we follow that over to the next column and that tells us that we have to multiply our full load current by 175. So, according to uh, table 430.52, we have to multiply our dual element time, uh, del time delay fuse by 175. Okay, so now we're going to take our full load current, which we already found in article 430.250, and this is going to tell us that we have a full load current times 175% for our dual element time delay fuse according to table 430.52. So full load current is 14 amps. We're going to multiply that by 1.75 and that is going to give us a total of 24.5 amps. Now, they don't make a breaker or a fuse that is 24.5 amps. So what we have to do is we have to go to the next available size. How do you find the next available size? Take yourself over in the code book to article 240.6. It's going to tell you that 25 is our next available size. We don't want to go back to 20 because, you know, we're looking at 4.5 amps. That's a lot of amps. So let's get up to five let's just go up one more and let's get a 25 amp fuse so we're using a dual element time delay fuse that is 25 amps i hope this makes some sense we got to we got to look in the code book we got to do an example on the board i hope it makes sense today we sized wire overloads and fuse so i introduced you again to the wolf chart some of you may have seen it some of you may have never seen it this way but I'll tell you, if you understand the wolf chart and you write what I wrote, what I had up on the board in the beginning of this video, put that in your code book. Put in this video, go ahead and subscribe and stay up to date with Craig Mashad, the electrical instructor. Have a great day and be safe.